Oh yeah. My name is Franco DeLeon. Thanks a lot for picking up this mix CD brought to you by Just Rock. Yo, what's up, Strike TV? This is Daniel here, and we're here with Franco DeLeon from nice Chicago. Chicago. All right. You know, I'm from the Midwest. I grew up in the Midwest, and I've been hearing a lot of your stuff lately recently. And one of the things I really find really interesting about your your, you know, your, your style when it comes to making mixing breakbeats, you sound a lot different than most <laughs> breakbeat DJs. Can you elaborate and tell me a little bit about your style? Uh, yeah, well, um, five years ago, I had always been aware of the break scene, uh, especially in Chicago, and, uh, you know, our, our history is different in terms of uh, how b how came to Chicago and the music that we were listening to. Um, like, for example, in the 90s when we were in kind of a down period in terms of how much publicity b-boying was getting, we weren't necessarily listening to classic punk breaks. Um, Chicago is the city of like house music, so um, when we were going to parties, it was really, they weren't catering to us, so my influences are different than some of the other breaks DJs uh, who are out on the scene. And, uh, you know, fast forward five years later, and uh, I had DJed uh, some events, and I primarily played a lot of hip hop, uh, but I kind of had the idea that, um, because we were kind of listening to the same stuff over and over again. I mean, a lot of the really classic, like, fun breaks, uh, you would hear, like, the Mexican every final, or you would hear Scenario every semifinal. And, uh, you know, while those are great songs, I was like, there's so much music out there that people connect to that I would love to be able to bring that to the B-Boy jam, just kind of flip it in a way that is still applicable to what B-Boys need to dance to. So I listen to so much different stuff, from Radiohead to Kanye to Common, you know, both Chicago artists, and then um, all the way to uh, UGBs. And I was like, I love this stuff, but it just has to be tweaked a little bit so that B-Boys can get down to it, you know? The other thing that really kind of uh, motivated the sound was, I was like, when B-Boys battle, they're trying to win. So how can I play the hypest? most aggressive, like, I want to fucking kill you shit so that they get hype and they fucking do their best because, you know, it's a give and take. And when I play for battles, I want the dancers to be able to dance their best. So, like, that was thrown in there. So I think that kind of defined my style. Really aggressive, um, slightly familiar, and also playing homage to uh, traditional breaks DJ. Long-winded answer, but I think about it a lot. All right, so how long would you say you've been a DJ, you know, in the b-boy scene? In the b-boy scene, um, 12 years. Yeah, 12 years. Has your style, like, has it evolved within those 12 years? Yeah. Maybe there's been, like, a lot of learning curves? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, every, every event I try to push and get outside of my comfort zone, and, um, but not push and get outside of my comfort zone, so it's just about, the, like, the artistry, because I think that's kind of whack. It's really pushing and getting out of my comfort zone so that it's new and fresh every time so that the dancers who I'm hoping to affect like really get a chance to express themselves in new ways and find new things in the music and really have one of the best jobs in the world because I get to pull from all sorts of genres and expose people to all this fantastic music that either they know and they need to hear like in a different way to really understand it or music that we've loved forever and just like a different take on it. So uh, yeah, changing, growing every single time. And uh, you know, like that's the fun part, you know, it's a constant learning curve, you know? At least for B-Boys, we always want to strive to be, you know, the most original dancer. Do you think that that same applies to just DJs? I, I think, well, you know, just like in, uh, in B-Boying, you have people who just want to be part of it. So they try to learn what's already out there, what's already established, and that's their that's their lane, and they do that really well. Um, there's also b-boys who try to find new things with themselves and with the art form and try to push what the art form really is. Um, I think it's the same for DJs. Uh, I think there's DJs who really kind of, like for example, E-Double in Chicago, I think he is probably Chicago's number one traditional breaks DJ. I mean, you know, all of the key elements of being a breaks DJ, he does, you know, he digs. It's, he focuses on doubling, uh, he doesn't do a lot of turntablism, and it's really um, that art form. And, and you know, I always try to pay a lot of respect to uh, you know, uh, artists in Chicago. Me, I'm in a completely different lane, whereas I, I'm 
I'm understanding and know that kind of stuff. Um, and I definitely respect it a lot. I try to incorporate elements of it into what I do, which is trying to, to push the boundaries of, you know, what should break B-Boy Breaks music sound like, in my opinion. Um, and some people like it. Um, I'm happy and I'm really grateful for them. Some people don't like it and they let me know and I'm really grateful for them letting me know. So yeah, I think there's definitely um, there's definitely a, a wide spectrum, just like in B-Boy, you know? From what I noticed, you're, not only are you a DJ, but you're also a, a producer. You know, you make your own original music, you make your own original beats. Yeah. Um, on one of your albums, there's a lot of different influences. You got, you know, you got not only the Jackson Sisters, you got funk, you got, there's also African influences in, in there, Spanish. Like, where do you draw from all this, these different kinds of influences? Uh, well, you know, like, uh, I get a lot of music sent to me. <laughs> and um, basically, what the process is it goes into my iTunes. And constantly throughout the day, I just have my iTunes on random. So I'll listen to something, like, I'll just be listening to, like, four hours. And then I'll hear something and be like, oh, that's dope. What is that? And I'll make a note of it. I mean, there's so much amazing music out there. And, uh, you know, I get to discover it every day. Um, I might hear something on the radio, uh, obviously. I don't really listen to the radio, but I might be in someone's car. And, or someone might be like, hey, you listen to the CD. Or someone might be like, hey, check this group out. And, um, yeah, I mean, really, the influences is the music, but it's also the, the people who are, you know, who I consider my friends and my acquaintances and other artists who are like, hey, listen to this. And I'm not always, like, the, the fastest to get to, like, something that's handed to me, but, uh, you know, like, I might have something for, like, two years and never hear a track off it and then be like, oh, shit, this is fucking amazing. So, um, yeah, I mean, really, it's I just try to keep my ears open all the time and try to uh, just really appreciate the music for what it is and then from there be like, oh, this is how I can flip it. So. There's definitely a lot more DJs or people that want to be DJs nowadays, you know, with the invention of, like, Serato and, you know, just the usage of you don't really have to dig deep for any vinyl anymore. Now, do you have any advice for, like, coming or wannabe DJs out there? Sure, sure, sure. Um, uh, well, one, good job for, uh, for taking an interest. And, you know, um, you know, when, like, the DVS systems, like Serato and, like, Final Scratch came out, everyone, and Tractor, everyone was like, oh, no, the craft of DJing is, um, you know, going to be corrupted because there's not as much work to get involved in it, you, you know, like, you don't have to go to the record store every week to get the new shit or the old shit or the dusties or you don't got to go to the bookstores um, to like look in their basement for nine hours. But really, I was, I'm kind of like, hey man, the more people who are involved in it, the more people who are become a, the more people become an educated audience. So one, if you're interested, that's awesome. Uh, two, like, do it, I guess, because you really love it. I mean, every time I lose sight of reason I do this which is because I have such a good time doing it and sharing music and making music um, like that's what always kind of makes it sour and I have to get back to I do this because it's so much fun so do it because it's fun and there's so many other things that um, you know get you know wrapped up in the decision like oh the DJ gets all the girls and free drinks and it's a great lifestyle and like you know yeah, party 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 all the time and people know my name and you know, all that stuff, and let me just tell you, that is so fucking true. <laughs> no, I'm fucking with you. No, that, that actually is true. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, take all that stuff away, and at the core of it is still, you know, the art form of DJing, and, you know, do it because, you know, like, you love the music, and it's fun for you, and, uh, you know, like, if there's love involved, you can't go wrong, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you really love it, you really can't go wrong. All right, great. Lastly, uh, shouts. Oh yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Chicago. Chicago, Chicago. I love Chicago. That, that's my city. That's my home. Um, the whole scene there, like, you know, not even just the b-boy scene, but just the music scene, the people, my family. Um, I always have to shout out God because, you know, he made this all possible. Like, God has made this all possible. So that's um, number one. Like, these are all gifts from him. But also my mom and my dad because, you know, like, they've supported this in a real way and uh, always been behind me. My girlfriend, Becca, always down, my uh, sisters, and but like, I mean, that's the core, but everyone uh, who's ever been there, Coney Rock Productions, that's my family, I've known them forever. Uh, check out his website, ConeyRock.com, and like, I mean, I could go on and on for everyone. Like, I did not do this by myself, that is for sure. Um, thank you to Strife TV 
for uh, finally giving me an interview. I'm so excited about that. But yeah, I mean, like, everyone that I come in contact with has ever been nice or expressed an opinion. Like, yeah, you have contributed to this career that I, like, so gratefully enjoy. And uh, I just gotta be thankful for everybody. All right, now in this December, you got another, the new version of Hot Butter Breaks coming up. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, because I've been a fan of one, two, and three, you know? Oh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you, get, you make really good mixtapes, so talk a little about your the next volume. Well, um, I still haven't really kind of decided its direction yet. Basically, the Hot Butter Breaks series is all the music throughout the year that I've found or has found me, and I really enjoyed, and it's my own spin on it, and it's, it's for B-Boys, it is for the B-Boy practice session. Um, that is what it is for. Um, I wanted to create something that they can put in, start warming up to, have a great session to, and then like, peace, call it a night. So that's what Hot Butter Breaks is about. Um, I could go into the technicalities of kind of the style that I've decided for it. The Hot Butter Breaks series has a certain sound and a certain style. Um, but as for Hot Butter Breaks 4, which comes out December uh, 14th or 15th, um, actually, I'm not really sure where it's gonna go. Like, I really have to look at all the music that I've listened to and decide, you know, uh, what kind of flavor do I want to give it because obviously, you know, it's part of a series, but I don't want to keep on putting out the same things. Like I said, I'm trying to push, I'm trying to expand the boundaries of what we think is appropriate for, uh, for B-Boy music. And uh, yo, just check it out at francodeleon.com. That's F-R-A-N-C-O-D-E-L-E-O-N.com. Check it out. Um, everything I have is available for instant download. Um, you can purchase CDs through there. But on top of that, I do a weekly podcast, um, which is basically like a free two-hour mix. It's not necessarily always b-boy music, but I think it's just good music that I want to share. And, you know, some people dig it, so that's a good time. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful and, and really looking forward to putting out more stuff. Word. All right. Um, that's Franco DeLeon. This is Daniel. And you know, as my boy, man, and God says it, straight life. Peace. <laughs>